So for several years now, I have wanted to test out a pair of Grant Stone boots. I have had many friends reach out to me and tell me, you've got to try Grant Stone, you've got to try Grant Stone. Well, the reason why I delayed it for so long was because I watched Grant Stone and I noticed that every year they tend to put out new versions of their plain toe boots. And with this dark forest kudu, I was hoping they would eventually release some kind of plain toe version with this leather. However, that has still not happened to this date. So when the Black Friday sale rolled around in 2022, I decided it was time to check out a Grant Stone boot for the first time. So let me just start off by saying that I was blown away at the quality control. I have never received a pair of shoes or boots that had this high level of quality control. And out of all the companies that I own shoes from, which include Alden, Crockett and Jones, Allen Edmonds, Cheney, I find that the Grant Stone had slightly better quality control than all of them, which was surprising. Although the stitching is very similar to what you would get with an Alden pair, it's even more clean. And the perfection on the welt and the fudging, everything is just amazing. I don't know how they're able to keep up this level of quality control, but this appears to be the norm with Grant Stone. And it's not just the upper that looks really well done. Also, the lining is very well done. I mean, just look at how neat it looks here. It's very clean. And there's a nice little handwritten numbers and the size on the upper. Also, from what I understand, these boots are made up of almost entirely leather. And there's no leather board or fiber board in them. This means that the heel counter is made of leather and that there's no fiber board inside the heel stack or midsole areas. But does having an all leather boot and all this perfection mean that the boots are going to be better overall? In this video, I'm just going to give you my honest thoughts about the pros and the cons of this boot. And I'm also going to be comparing it a lot to the Allen Edmonds Higgins Mill boot because the Higgins is sort of like my measuring stick for all other boots. So let's start with the pros. What did I like about this boot? Well, I'll start off with the last. The Leo last is an excellent fitting last for me. It's supposed to be similar to the Alden Berry, and I find that it is with my limited experience, except there's a little bit better feel underneath the middle of the last, meaning that it feels like there's a little bit better arch support. It's not quite as flat as the Berry last or the 1757. It feels like it sort of hugs your foot just a little bit better. In terms of the heel fit and the ball area, it's pretty similar in width to the Berry or the 1757. Now, the Leo last is not a long last, but it is slightly longer than Allen Edmonds 1757, keeping in mind you're going down a half size from the Allen Edmonds 1757. Also, one very important thing for me about this last was that there's plenty of room at the instep. With the Higgins Mill, I'm always wanting more room at the instep, while this Leo last provides plenty of it. In fact, it provides about the same amount of instep room as the Alden Modified last, which is great for me. Overall, I find the support level of this boot at least on par with Alden, maybe even slightly better. It actually reminds me more of how my Crockett and Jones shoes fit when I wear them. That's how the feeling is. Even though this company, Grant Stone, is imitating the look of Alden, I find that it actually feels more like a Crockett and Jones shoe. The next thing I like about these boots is obviously the Forest Kudu leather. It's an unusual kind of leather. Now, this Forest Kudu does start off pretty stiff. It's very different than the Allen Edmonds Kudu in brown, where that was a much softer, more pliable, stretchier leather. This is not quite the same. It's definitely more substantial, heavier, and definitely takes time to break in. It's also a magnet for dust, so that's one thing you have to watch out for. Make sure you brush the boots. One really convenient thing about this leather, though, is that it will self-heal really well. You can scuff it a lot, and most of the time you're not going to have to use any conditioner on it. You can just gently rub it with your fingers. Most of the time that's going to hide the blemishes. But if you need to, you can always apply something like Vic4. I've tried several different kinds of laces with this boot. I've tried whiskey laces. I've tried the stock laces in brown. 
But in the end, I found these four millimeter flat laces from Leichico to fit the best. These are the olive green color in 120 centimeters long, if you want to buy them. I tried the six millimeter ones, but I just found them a little bit too thick for these boots. 4.5 that Guarded Goods offers would be the perfect width, but unfortunately Guarded Goods does not have as good of a nice loden or light olive color that this company has. So I'm sticking with these for this boot. Now I mentioned earlier that I wanted to get a plain toe. So why did I decide I was okay with getting a cap toe? Well, because of the nature of this boot, even though it's a cap toe, it's still going to come off as a casual boot. And for me, I don't have any need for formal cap toe boots at this point in my life. So I invited this kind of casual cap toe. And honestly, you're not going to see much of a difference from a distance anyway. It just almost looks like a plain toe from a distance. But having this boot be casual makes it a lot easier for me to wear practically. How would I rate the comfort of this boot? Well, after about six or seven wears, it did become really comfortable, but you're going to have to be patient and I'll get into that a little bit later. Now, here's an important question. How should you size this boot? Well, I think with most people, you probably want to go a half size down from your Higgins mill size or take the same size that you use for the Alden Berry Last. That's exactly what I did and the Leo last fits me beautifully in 7.5D, whereas my usual size is 8. I would say start there. For most people, that's probably where you want to start. And I can't imagine going up to size 8 because this is already a pretty generous last at the instep. Also, it should be noted that Grant Stone are very generous with the extras that they give you when you purchase a pair of boots. First of all, they give you this nicely constructed box. It's like a heavy duty box with a hole in it to keep air moving in so that mold doesn't start growing on your shoes. But then they also include this nice little card. They include dust bags. They include a polishing cloth. They even give you a little shoehorn. I'm not used to receiving so much stuff when I buy a pair of boots. And it just goes to show how much value you get when you purchase something from them. Now, what are the things that I didn't like about this boot, or perhaps just possible concerns to keep in mind? Well, I'm gonna do a little bit of comparing between this and the other boots that I own. In comparison to the Higgins Mill boot, the Grant Stone boot is a lot more stiff out of the box. It's going to take you a lot longer to break them in. It took me about six wears before the boots really started to feel great. The out of the box, soft comfort that I was used to with the Higgins Mill it's not there with the Grant Stone. You have to be a little bit more patient. I've already mentioned that the Grant Stone boots have wonderful support, but I wish the heel sock liner extended all the way into the front of the boots, just like it does with the Higgins Mill boot. I don't know why more companies do not do that. Perhaps it's not seen as being as pure of a boot if you have the foam in there, but for me, I just find that one of the things I like a little better about the Higgins is that if I'm doing a lot of walking throughout the day, it's easier on my toes. Well, I wouldn't say the Grant Stone is uncomfortable, it's just that I would probably reach for the Higgins if I was going to be walking a lot. But for just regular day-to-day -day activities, the Grant Stone is perfectly fine for me. And don't get me wrong, it's still a very comfortable boot. Overall, I find the Leo Last is not quite as perfect for me as the Alden Modified Last, but it's not far behind, and if I'm being truthful, it's a much better last for me than the Higgins in terms of fit. Now, in terms of appearance, it's pretty similar to how the Higgins or the Berry Last looks. You'll see that the Allen Edmonds 1757 and the Modified Last both tend to go more straight where the big toe is, whereas the Leo last tends to taper just a little bit more in. And for some reason, it does give the shoes a little bit more of a rounder almond look that sticks out just a little bit more. But in terms of appearance, most people are not going to be able to tell the difference between these last if you're looking at them from a distance. Also, another thing to keep in mind that I noticed immediately with Grant Stone was the weight. It's even more heavy than the Alden boots that I own and it's way heavier than any of the Allen Edmonds Higgins Mills that I own. 
I noticed this when I first held them in my hands, just how heavy they are. And I think a lot of it has to do with the outsole and midsole that they create. Something about it just feels heavier. And also the upper is pretty substantial as well. But I'll tell you one thing, when I'm wearing these on my feet and I'm walking, to be truthful, I don't even notice the weight when I'm walking, but it's just something I notice when I take them off and hold them. For some people, this might be a problem, but just be aware they are heavier than Alden and Allen Edmonds. One of my friends told me that the Grant Stone is like getting a brand new baseball glove. And I know what he means because when you first get a baseball glove, it's very stiff and a little uncomfortable. But after a few weeks, it feels really great and it's just like another extension of your hand. That is pretty accurate to how Grant Stone boots start out. You have to be more patient with them. They don't have that instant out of the box comfort that the Higgins Mill has or the Alden boots even. I find them a lot more stiff and more heavy feeling than either of those companies boots. Also keep in mind that the insole is not going to feel quite as soft as the Higgins Mill or the Alden boots. That's not to say it's uncomfortable, it's just that to me it feels more similar to Cheney insoles or even Loke. If you've had experience with Cheney or Loke, I think Grant Stone, the front part of their insoles feels closer to those companies, while the heel, sock liner, feels pretty much identical to the Allen Edmonds Higgins Mill or what Alden has. While this isn't a criticism, I will just say that I noticed Grant Stone does not actually use day night outsoles. It feels similar to day night, except it's a little more heavy. I'm not sure exactly what it feels like because none of the other shoes or boots in my collection feel exactly like it. It's sort of their own unique thing, but I've had no issues with it. It's a very comfortable outsole. One complaint I have heard from other people about Grant Stone is that because they actually use a real leather heel counter, some people have complained about heel pain from it rubbing against their heel. I have not experienced this yet, and I don't think I will because I don't feel any discomfort at the heel, but it is something to be aware of that can happen. Now, I know some people are watching this wondering what I think about buying boots that are made in China. Well. I do honestly prefer to buy shoes and boots that are made in the United States, but I do own a couple of shoes that were made in England. And when I looked into Grant Stone, I liked what I read about them. They sounded like they were a very good company. And I'm just going to leave it at that. You can decide for yourself if you want to buy Grant Stone or not buy them. Either choice is fine. Just do your own research is all I'm going to tell you. Now let's talk about the total cost. I got these on sale during the Black Friday sale for about $320. Now for $320, at least in terms of the quality of the materials and the quality of the construction, I don't think there's anything else on the market that's going to be able to match that for the price. These boots would surely cost at least $700 if they were made in the United States. So you can keep that in mind with these boots, you're really getting a lot more quality than what you're used to, or at least what I was used to previously. Now, how would I rate these boots overall? Well, if I was just going off of the quality of materials and the quality of construction, these boots would be a 10 out of 10. However, if I'm just going off of comfort out of the box, I would say these were a 7 out of 10. In comparison to the Higgins Mill, I would say that the quality of materials there would be a 7 out of 10, while the out-of-the-box comfort was an 8 out of 10. My favorite pairs of boots are on the Alden Modified Last because not only do they have the best support that I've had previously, but they also have the highest level of comfort and the best last. Out of 1 through 10, I would give the Alden boots a 9 because I don't believe there's a perfect boot, nine would be the highest I would give the Alden boots. Now, taking into consideration everything that I've said about the Leo last, the leather, the quality materials, the construction, the comfort, how would I rate this boot? Well, I would give it an eight out of 10, just like I would with the Allen Edmonds Higgins Mill original boot in Chrome XL. I realize it's not a complete apples to apples comparison, 
but I'm just making a point that both of these boots are really well made. You could say the Grant Stone is better made than the Allen Edmonds. There's really no question that it has better materials and better construction. But again, you have to factor in how is it going to feel and also the design and everything else. So at least for me in my eyes, I think these are as good of an experience as wearing the Higgins Mills. Just as comfortable or almost as comfortable. Again, the Grant Stone does not have the full sock liner that the Higgins has, which I wish it did have. But that's, that's not to say that the Grant Stone is not comfortable. It definitely is. It just feels a little different. But my point is here is that you can't go wrong with either of these boots. This Grant Stone boot is an excellent option. And regardless of which one you choose, I don't think you'll be disappointed. If you want more support, maybe go with Grant Stone. If you want something that has more padding and is more instantly comfortable, maybe choose the Higgins Mill. I mean, it all comes down to what you want in your daily experience, and there's no right or wrong answer. Would I buy another pair of Grant Stone boots? Definitely. But I'm holding out hope that they will eventually release some kind of plain toe boot in olive leather. I know they have had some kind of olive leather that they used in the past, but it seems to be like a limited run and it's not part of their regular collection. But I do hope Grant Stone will release something in a lighter olive green on a plain toe model, and then it will be hard to resist. Overall though, I was very pleasantly surprised with how well made these boots are, and they are at least as good as any boots or shoes in my entire collection. The way Grant Stone is currently making shoes and boots is amazing, and I hope they continue to offer more variations of the plain toe boots in the future. Perhaps they could put one out in a lighter color of olive green. We'll see. Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you got something out of this video, and I'll see you again soon.